Fonso Cajero, A Journey into Finance History Chapter 25, The Mississippi Company Bubble, 1720 The early 18th century was a period of economic flux in Europe, characterized by the aftermath of the War of Spanish Succession and the emergence of novel financial instruments aimed at managing national debts. In France, the government faced significant fiscal challenges and sought innovative solutions to address its mounting debt burden. Against this backdrop, the Mississippi Company, or Compagnie d'Occident, was founded in 1717 by Scottish economist John Law. John Law, a visionary entrepreneur and monetary theorist, proposed the creation of the Mississippi Company as a means to exploit the economic potential of France's colonial holdings in North America. The company was granted exclusive trading rights in the French territories of Louisiana and Canada, as well as a monopoly on tobacco and other lucrative commodities. Law envisioned the company as a vehicle for economic development, trade expansion, and debt restructuring. To finance its operations, the Mississippi Company issued shares to investors, promising generous dividends and the prospect of substantial profits from colonial trade and speculation. The allure of these dividends, combined with Law's reputation as a financial innovator, attracted widespread interest in the company's stock, leading to a surge in its valuation. The launch of the Mississippi Company sparked a speculative frenzy among investors, who clamored to acquire shares in the company in anticipation of future profits. The stock price soared to dizzying heights, driven by a combination of genuine optimism about the company's prospects and speculative excess, fueled by greed and irrational exuberance. Speculators, emboldened by the rising price of Mississippi Company shares, engaged in risky behavior, borrowing heavily to finance their purchases and amplifying the bubble's inflationary dynamics. The company's directors, aware of the speculative fervor surrounding their stock, actively promoted it through marketing campaigns and financial incentives, further fueling the speculative mania. The success of the Mississippi Company was bolstered by the enthusiastic support of the French government, which viewed the company as a means to address the nation's fiscal woes and promote economic growth. King Louis XV granted the company a royal charter and provided it with generous subsidies and tax breaks, enhancing its credibility and legitimacy in the eyes of investors. The government's endorsement of the Mississippi Company lent it an air of official sanction and instilled confidence among investors who viewed it as a safe and lucrative investment opportunity. Public enthusiasm for the company's stock reached fever pitch, with investors from all walks of life eagerly participating in the speculative frenzy. Despite the initial euphoria surrounding the Mississippi Company, the bubble eventually burst in a spectacular fashion, triggering a devastating financial collapse. In September 1720, the company's stock price plummeted precipitously, wiping out the fortunes of countless investors and plunging the French economy into turmoil. The collapse of the Mississippi Company had far-reaching consequences for France, leading to widespread bankruptcies, financial ruin, and social upheaval. Many investors who had borrowed heavily to invest in the company found themselves unable to repay their debts, resulting in a wave of personal and corporate insolvencies. The crisis exposed the fragility of France's financial system and undermined public confidence in the government's ability to manage the economy. The aftermath of the Mississippi Company bubble was marked by a period of soul-searching and reform as France grappled with the consequences of the crisis. The collapse of the bubble prompted a reassessment of the government's economic policies and financial practices, leading to the implementation of regulatory reforms aimed at preventing similar episodes of speculative excess in the future. The crisis also underscored the importance of transparency, accountability, and prudence in corporate governance and financial regulation. It served as a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked speculation and the need for robust regulatory safeguards to protect investors and maintain financial stability. Ultimately, the Mississippi Company bubble left an indelible mark on French economic and financial history, shaping attitudes towards risk-taking, speculation, and government intervention in the economy.
It stands as a stark reminder of the perils of irrational exuberance and the potential consequences of unchecked greed and speculation in the pursuit of wealth. The early 18th century was a tumultuous period in European history, marked by the aftermath of the War of Spanish Succession and the economic challenges facing many nations on the continent. In France, the devastation wrought by years of war had left the country burdened with debt and struggling to rebuild its economy. The French government, under the regency of Philippe d'Orléans, sought innovative solutions to address the nation's financial woes and stimulate economic growth. It was against this backdrop that John Law, a Scottish economist and financial speculator, proposed his ambitious plan to establish the Mississippi Company. Law had gained renown for his ideas on monetary theory and his advocacy of paper currency backed by the state. He saw the Mississippi Company as a means to harness the economic potential of France's colonial territories in North America and stimulate investment in the country's economy. John Law's vision for the Mississippi Company was rooted in his belief in the transformative power of commerce and finance to drive economic development. Inspired by the success of European trading companies, such as the Dutch East India Company and the British East India Company, Law saw an opportunity to replicate their achievements in France. He believed that the exploitation of France's colonial holdings in Louisiana and Canada could generate substantial profits and alleviate the country's financial difficulties. In 1717, Law obtained a charter from the French government to establish the Mississippi Company, granting it exclusive trading rights in the French colonies and a monopoly on certain commodities, including tobacco. The company was structured as a joint stock enterprise, with shares made available to investors, seeking to profit from the anticipated economic boom in the colonies. Law's persuasive rhetoric and the government's endorsement of the company's activities attracted widespread interest in its stock, setting the stage for a speculative frenzy. The launch of the Mississippi Company ignited a speculative frenzy unparalleled in French financial history. Investors, buoyed by the promise of riches and seduced by Law's visionary rhetoric, clamored to acquire shares in the company, driving up their price to stratospheric levels. The stock market became the focal point of frenzied activity, as individuals from all walks of life sought to capitalize on the perceived opportunity for wealth accumulation. Speculation in Mississippi Company shares reached fever pitch, fueled by a potent combination of greed, optimism, and herd mentality. Investors, both seasoned financiers and novice speculators, poured their savings into the stock market in pursuit of quick profits. The allure of easy wealth proved irresistible, leading to a surge in demand for Mississippi Company shares and a corresponding increase in their price. The success of the Mississippi Company was bolstered by the enthusiastic support of the French government, which viewed the company as a panacea for the nation's economic woes. Philippe d'Orléans, the regent of France, lent his backing to Law's enterprise, recognizing its potential to stimulate economic growth and reduce the national debt. The government granted the Mississippi Company exclusive trading rights in the colonies and provided it with generous subsidies and tax incentives to support its activities. The government's endorsement of the Mississippi Company lent it an air of legitimacy and instilled confidence among investors who viewed it as a safe and lucrative investment opportunity. Public enthusiasm for the company's stock reached unprecedented levels, with individuals from all social strata eagerly participating in the speculative mania. The combination of government support and public confidence fueled a virtuous cycle of speculation, driving the stock price ever higher. Despite the initial euphoria surrounding the Mississippi Company, the bubble eventually burst in a spectacular fashion, triggering a catastrophic collapse in the stock market. In September 1720, the price of Mississippi Company shares plummeted precipitously, wiping out the fortunes of countless investors and plunging the French economy into turmoil. The collapse of the Mississippi Company had far-reaching consequences for France, leading to widespread bankruptcies, financial ruin and social upheaval. Many investors who had borrowed heavily to invest in the company found themselves unable to repay their debts, resulting in a wave of personal and corporate insolvencies. The crisis exposed the fragility of France's financial system 
and undermined public confidence in the government's ability to manage the economy.